G'day, it's Pete here, and today I wanted to do a lesson talking about Michael's Qubits. Uh, so this is a fairly popular convention, most people play this, or at least understand it to some point, but I wanted to cover what it is and when it applies and some of the uh, catches about it. And then also, how do we actually respond and what actually affects my um, choice of when I want to actually use it. So let's jump straight in to see what we can do. So what is a Michaels qubit? So when the opponents open and we bid uh, their suit, so when we uh, are the overcaller and we overcall their suit, we can use this not to say we've got hearts because that doesn't really make much sense. Because why would we want to play in hearts if they want to play in hearts? So what we instead use this for is a way of showing a different type of distributional hand. Now the hand type that Michael's Cupids use are uh, used to show 5-5 five, five distributional hands. So it's used, you bid it and you're showing your partner you have a 5-5 five, five hand shape. And the two suits you're showing are as many mages as possible. So if the opponents open one heart, you are showing spades and a minor. If the opponents open a minor, you are showing both minors. And if the opponents open spades, you're showing hearts and a minor. So you are showing the mages, or as many mages as you can have, given that they might have opened one. So Michael's is for mages. There is a corresponding other convention that uh, works similarly for 5-5s, five and it's unusual 2 trumps. And that's used to show the two lowest unbid suits. So, um, if I instead jump to two no trumps, here this would show clubs and diamonds. But here, when I bid two hearts, it says I have as many mages as possible. I have a 5-5 five, five shape. One of the mages is taken, so I have five spades, and I have five of another suit. So, we haven't specified which our other suit actually is. So, this is what Michael's is. It's a way of showing five five shapes. And it's Michael's is for mages. It shows five, like as many mages as possible, given uh, what the opponents have been have bid. And it happens when you overcall in their suit. So let's look at a uh, couple of examples of when it doesn't apply. Okay. So first of all, it only applies if it's the first time for our side to bid. So let's have an auction go something like. Uh, club, let's say we bid a spade, and partner bids two clubs. This isn't Michael's, they're bidding the opponent's suit, but this is not Michael's because it's not the first time that our sides bid, because we overcalled a spade. Um, so for Michael's to apply, it has to be the first time our side overcalls. Our side bids a suit. So it's our, the first side that First time our side comes into the auction and we're bidding the opponent's suit. So um, if we've overcalled a suit, if we've bid no trumps, even if we've made a double, the, this all removes Michael's Q bid from the spot. That doesn't apply. We can't use it as responder. We can't use it as the opener. It is only a technique used by overcaller and if it's only for the, if our side hasn't bid anything else. Another time that it doesn't apply is, let's say the opponents are playing multi-two diamonds. Um, and we bid three diamonds. This is not a Michael's Q bid because uh, the opponents haven't bid a suit naturally. So we have to be bidding the opponent's suit when they're showing it naturally. Two diamonds says nothing about diamonds if they're playing multi-twos. So three diamonds is actually just natural. Similarly, if they open, say, precision one club, saying it's strong 16 plus points. If we bid two clubs, this is not a Michael's Q bid because they haven't shown the suit. Um, whereas if they play short club, you can do it. So if one club shows two or more, you can play Michael's over that, although some people choose not to. Um, but when one club is just strong, two clubs is usually just natural. So Michael's applies only as the overcalling side when it's the first time that our side has bid something. Um, but also only if the opponents have bid a suit naturally. So if they've opened a precision one club where it's zero plus clubs, then two clubs is natural. If they open a multi two diamonds where two diamonds is 
we can either may draw some strong hand. Three diamonds is natural um, because they haven't actually shown those suits. So uh, that's not a Michael's cube in those spots. So that's rough, roughly when Michael's applies. Uh, it covers most of the times. It can be done by the fourth person. So let's say it went one club pass, one heart. Um, you can play Michael's cue bids, but you want to discuss it in your partnership what two clubs is, because some people might play that as natural or Michael's, and some people might play two hearts as natural or as Michael's. Um, but whichever it is, you can use one of these bids or neither of those bids or both of those bids as a Michael's cue bid in those spots to show both the unbid suits. Okay, so... That's what Michael's is. It's a way to show 5-5. Five, five. When it applies, it's by the overcalling side when they've bid naturally, and it's the first time for our side to bid. Now for the question that so often gets asked. How many points does it show? Now, before going into that, there are lots of things that change it. Um, but for me, I want to like talk about what are the objectives of the Michael's qubit. So there's a couple of things that we might be trying to achieve and what that depends on is the vulnerability. So vulnerability matters a lot about what our objectives are. So some of the objectives are we might want to sacrifice or we might want to play the contract or we might want to disrupt the opponents or we might want to bid game. So we might want to have a part score, we might want to bid game, we might want to get in the opponent's way or we might want to sacrifice. Now, first of all, getting in the opponent's way, Michael's qubits aren't very good at for that. So let's say that the opponent starts one heart and we bid two hearts, um, which would show five spades and five of a minor because it only specifies what the majors are. So we could have five spades and five diamonds or five spades and five clubs. I'll get into more about how we uh, fix that, uh, work out what to do with that later. But one thing to note is that when the opponents, if the opponents end up playing this contract, then they know a lot about your hand shape. They know that you've got 10 cards in two suits, which means you've only got three in the others. So they'll be able to play the hand really well. So if you are just trying to disrupt the opponents, yeah, you've taken away a little bit of space. But if they're going to win the contract in the end, they're going to be able to play the hand better. So disrupting the opponents, Michael's Qubit is not a good way of doing it. It does make bidding a little bit tougher for them, but the reward for them playing the hand is a lot better because it's such a descriptive bid. Next is uh, sacrificing. You may want to sacrifice, but look at the vulnerability. So uh, if we're unfavorable, where we're vulnerable and the opponents are not, Sacrificing is a terrible idea. So we almost never want to sacrifice when we're vulnerable against not, which means that Michael's Qubits, you shouldn't be aiming to bid it on a hand where you want to sacrifice uh, if you're vulnerable against not. Whereas if you flipped the vulnerability and we were not vul and the opponents were vulnerable, sacrificing is a fantastic idea. Like if we think the opponents can make game and we want to bid over it just because we get a smaller penalty, that is the perfect time to do it. So if we're not vulnerable against vulnerable, sacrificing is a really strong objective, and we might want to use Michael, uh, Michael's Qubit to describe our distributional hand to try and do that. And then finally, there was maybe we've got a part score, or maybe we have a game contract. And if we've got a game contract, then we want a reasonable hand to up our chances of making the game. Um, part score, it's not doesn't matter too much. So how does that all come back to how many points do we show and what do we want to have to do it? So for me, the points that I show uh, based on a Michael's qubit depends on the vulnerability. Now, if we're vulnerable against not on this, like this, I only do it on sort of intermediate or strong hands. So like sort of maybe nine plus points for me. Different partnerships can do it on whatever they want, but you want to understand how your partnership works. And for me, um, because we're vulnerable against not, and I have no interest in sacrificing, and if the opponents win the contract, uh, it's bad for me, I want to have a slightly better hand before I use a Michael's Qubit. 
So for me, if I'm vulnerable against not, it's intermediate or I have a strong hand. Now you can always do it with a strong hand because your partner won't pass two hearts and then you can um, show that you have the stronger hand later by bidding again. Now when I bid two hearts, my partner will at this vulnerability expect that I have um, sort of nine plus points and try and bid accordingly. They sort of expect nine to sort of 14 in my partnership. So because sacrificing isn't a good idea at this vulnerability, then you want to be a bit more conservative. Whereas if you flipped the vulnerability and sacrificing is a great idea, then at favorable vulnerability, I do it on at either weak or strong. So I remove the intermediate ones out of there and then it's sort of like six to 10 or sort of 14 plus. Now it varies a bit depending on intermediates, extra distribution, uh, quality of suits like that. High card points aren't the be all and end all of trying to judge of Michaels, but that's sort of the range that I have if I swap it around. So if I'm favorable, it's either a weak bid or a strong bid because I, with the weak hands, I want to try and find these sacrifices. And this comes back to our objectives. So weak hands will now bid it if we're favorable. And another thing that you want to consider when bidding a Michaels bid is you're escalating the auction kind of high. And if you have a misfitting hand, you could get doubled. Now, if you are vulnerable, you are more likely to be getting doubled because the reward for your opponents doubling you is higher. Whereas if we're not vulnerable, then you want to be, uh, you're less likely to get doubled so you can bid it more freely. So again, this is why when I'm vulnerable, for me, it's intermediate or strong. When I'm not vulnerable, it's weak or strong. Um, so here, when I bid two hearts at this, this sort of hand, uh, my partner will expect that I've got a reasonable hand. So factors influence, influencing what sort of hand types you want to bid it on uh, are Michael's on. Firstly, vulnerability. If you're vulnerable against not, or, or all vulnerable, for me it's sort of intermediate or strong, whereas all vulnerable, like the point range can creep down just a little bit. Whereas if we're favorable or nil vulnerable, then it's sort of weak or strong. Um, because the choice of wanting to sacrifice here. So factors, vulnerability, and how you might get doubled if you're vulnerable means that you want to be a little bit more cautious, not bid it on as weak hands. Another factor that influences how aggressive you want to be is thinking about partner's response. So when we bid two hearts, the cheapest spot our partner can bid, get out is two spades, if they like spades. But if they like uh, playing in a minor, the cheapest spot that they can get out is three clubs. So when we bid one heart, two hearts, we're forcing our partner to uh, sometimes play at the two level and sometimes play at the three level. Whereas if we bring up a different hand, and so I'll just skip a couple. Okay, so here we've got hearts and diamonds. So let's say that the opponent opens one spade and ignoring the vulnerability because I probably wouldn't bid it on this hand, but it's pretty close, uh, is bidding two spades, which would show um, as many majors as possible. So it would say I've got five hearts and five of a minor. Now when we get in, the cheapest spot my partner can get out to is the three level. So notice that when it went one heart, two hearts, we could get out in two spades. Whereas here, we can get out in three hearts or possibly three diamonds. So we're always forcing our partner to the three level. So this sort of Michael's Cubid should be a bit more cautious than the previous one where we gave our partner to possibly play at the two level. So if you're forcing your partner to always bid at the three level, uh, then you want to be a bit more cautious. If you're allowing your partner to sometimes bid at the two level and sometimes at the three level, that's the middle ranking one. And then the final one is when um, the opponents open one of the minor, and this is a pretty common one, and we bid the, this and show both majors. Now my partner can get out at two hearts or two spades for both of our suits. So this one is the weakest one that we can actually bid it on because partner can always get out at the two level. So uh, 
Uh, you can be more aggressive when showing both mages because partner can get out at the two level for both of your suits. Whereas if you have um, showing spades and a minor, you want to be a little bit more cautious because partner can sometimes has to go to the three level and when you might get doubled, that's a lot worse. And if you're forcing your partner to go to the three level regardless, whether you use unusual two no trumps, which I haven't covered too much yet, or if it go, you're showing hearts and a minor, then you want to be a bit more cautious again. So just take the, consider this before making your bid of how much you are forcing your partner into the auction. Okay, so this is how uh, I judge whether or not Michael's Q bids should be bid. Vulnerability is the main factor and the, of the biggest importance. The second thing that you want to consider is what level am I forcing my partner to actually bid at. Okay, so next, how does partner actually uh, work out what our minor is or what do they do? So let's look at how partner responds and how we go from that. So let's say that uh, the opponents open one spade and we bid two spades showing hearts and a minor. Remember, Michael's is for majors. We're showing as many majors as possible and we have another five card suit. So it's easy if partner wants to play in hearts, they know whether they bid three hearts or four hearts. Partner, if they want to play in a minor, can bid three clubs, which is pass or correct. So if they're just weak and they want to get out in a minor, what they do is they bid um, the minor that they don't really like. So how pass or correct works is if they really liked clubs, they would not be bidding this because they're saying, if you have clubs, this is as high as I want to go. Now on this hand we would pass, and this would say that we had hearts and clubs. If instead we had hearts and diamonds in our hand, we would correct this to three diamonds, and this would say add hearts and diamonds. Another way that partner can bid, if they're invitational and want to find out what our suit is, they can bid two no trumps, which says show your second suit because I'm invitational or better. And when that happens, we would bid three clubs if we were weak, whereas if we, and here we're intermediate, uh, which is fine for this vulnerability. If we were a strong hand, maybe we'd jump to four clubs or bid something a bit more. So the two main ways that partner will find out uh, what your minor is, is first of all, they could bid a pass or correct bid. Um, now, usually this would be three clubs, uh, but it could be something else. They could jump bid, um, but basically they think, if my partner has clubs, what is the highest level I'm will willing to play? So if you bid three clubs, what they're saying is they don't really like clubs. They may or may not like diamonds. They may want to play in five diamonds if that's the case. Whereas if instead they bid three diamonds and you play that as pass or correct, some people do other bids, uh, use that for something else. But if you use that as pass or correct, it says three diamonds is the highest level I want to play if you have diamonds. Whereas I was happy to go higher in clubs because you're probably interested in clubs. And the reason being is if you weren't interested in gaming clubs, you would have started with three clubs. So the way pass or correct works is you think of, uh, imagine partner has clubs and imagine partner has diamonds. If you only want to play three clubs and three diamonds, you'd bid the cheaper option. You'd bid three clubs. If you wanted to play three clubs or five diamonds, Again, you'd bid the cheaper option. You'd bid three clubs because partner will correct it to diamonds, in which case you can then bid five diamonds. If instead you wanted to either play three diamonds or five clubs, then what you'd do is you'd bid three diamonds because that's the cheaper option. Partner can then correct it to a new thing, in which case you can bid it five clubs. So pass or correct, you envisage partner has both options, work out how high you want to go, and then bid the cheaper option. So uh, again, Partner has two options of trying to find out what your minor is. First of all, they could bid pass or correct, such as three clubs, which would say, if you have clubs, please pass. Or if you have diamonds, correct it to diamonds, in which case they might want to go to five diamonds or something like that. Uh, the other way is they can bid two no trumps, which says, show your second suit, which is usually invitational or better. So if you wanted to play in game in possibly either of the minors, this is how you can actually start. Um, so that's how you can respond 
and find out the minor. If you have a fit in the major, you can just bid three hearts. You might want to start with two no trumps and then correct it back to hearts. And yeah, pretty easy. Judging what you want when responding to it is, first of all, look at the vulnerability. Work out what you expect from your partnership for your Michael's Q bid. The other thing that you want to consider is, do I have a good fit? So if you have four card support, this is a really good fit. Your partner's got a distributional hand, and if you have a big fit with them, so at least a nine card fit, this is gonna play really well. So let's um, undo and say that, uh, let's say that, the, yeah, we'll say uh, one spade and two spades. Three hearts is the cheapest thing that we can do, um, other than going for a minor. So if we only had three hearts, we could go and bid like this. Whereas if we had, say, even four hearts to... If you've got four card support and some useful cards for partner, you should strongly consider bidding game. So I would bid game with an ace, four trumps, and a singleton in one of partner's suits because then I know I can sort of cross rough the hand and set it up. So as responder... If my partner had, say, ace, uh, ace to four clubs, or like, yeah. But my main point is, if you have four card support and like some useful tricks, then you should strongly be considering jumping to game. Um, we don't need much to make game opposite this sort of hand. If partner had ace to four clubs and four small hearts, that would be enough to potentially make game. We would have one spade loser, one diamond loser, no hearts, um, if hearts broke, and then we just need to pick up clubs for one loser, which shouldn't be too hard. And that's making it opposite a four count with two four card suits. Um, other times that it can work is if they've got four card support, an ace, and um, a singleton in clubs. So if partner had, say, queen jack to four hearts, and a singleton club, then we might be able to make game as well. So having four card support and some uh, distribution is good. Having four card support and uh, some aces are good. What you don't want to have as responder is you don't want to have slow cards. Look, notice if partner's got queen of spades or king jack of diamonds. These cards aren't going to be too useful. What they want are sharp cards. So aces outside of your suits or they want um, any points in your suit. So that's how they want to evaluate their hand to work out if that's actually useful. So that, that's all I really wanted to cover uh, today um, on Michaels. One extra addition is the unusual two no trumps, which is uh, shows the two lowest unbid suits. So if they open one diamond, we could bid two no trumps, which would show five clubs and five hearts. Um, so this usually co goes in conjunction with Michael's uh, qubits, where Michael's is for majors. Unusual two no trumps is unusual because it's focusing on the minors or the lowest bids, unbid suits. So here we can uh, bid two no trumps to show uh, clubs and hearts and a 5-5 five five shape. Again, taking in consideration that we're forcing partner to the three level and also that you want to look at the vulnerability. Um, but yeah, all we wanted to cover today. So we've looked at uh, what is Michael's qubits. Again, they're used to show five, five distributional hands. When they apply, they're applied only as the overcalling side and only if it's our first bid um, in the auction, that's not a pass. So if our side has bid no trumps, a suit or doubled, Michael's qubits are off. And also, if the opponents haven't bid a suit naturally, like if they open a strong club or if they open a multi-two diamonds, they're not Michael's Q bids if you just bid the suit that they bid um, because they're not showing anything in that suit, so you want that to be natural. The whole premise of this is they've bid the suit naturally. Why would we want to overcall in it? Now, we looked at uh, how many points do you need, and that really depends on vulnerability and what level we're actually forcing our partner to. And then a little bit about responding. You want good fits with them. So nine card fits are good. Sharp cards are good. Any points in their suits are good. What you don't want are slow cards in the other suit. Queens and jacks, or even potentially kings. 
don't track they, they don't pull as much weight basically anyway uh, that's all from me on Michael's qubits hope you enjoyed this lesson thanks for watching and I'll see you next time bye for now